This is Gabriel Gonzalez with the Cage Side Press here with Marlus Kunin, former featherweight and now ambassador for Bellator. I have to ask you know, it's been a little more since you fought for the title. You retired. How have you been keeping busy since then? I, w I was extremely busy till this day, uh, and uh, I'm now here for Spike the Netherlands. In, yeah, and the Netherlands is still called Spike because it's very, well, it's, it's yeah. doing very well. So it's not the paramount now. <laughs> And um, I have a, a book, I published a book, a documentary will uh, go in cinemas February 8th. And I'm pregnant, so yeah. Congratulations! Yeah. Do you know when you are due? About when? At the end of May. Oh, yeah. Boy or girl? Girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, spill, I spill the beans. <laughs> spill the beans. Keep, keep Do you have a name in mind? No, not yet, because I, I thought it would be a, uh, a boy, so when I found out, and I had names for a boy, and then I found out it was a girl, and I was like, Clueless till uh, this day. <laughs> uh, I like the name Gabriella, just letting you know. <laughs> Daddy <laughs> mind. There you go. I always feel obligated to say that. It's like I have a good idea. <laughs> no, I well, it. yes. Well, congratulations. That's obviously great news um, for yourself now, being around the fights. Like, do you ever, I mean, I know it's an obvious question, but do you ever feel like, you know, getting back in the competition, being around all the guys and remembering the team and everything? Well, you know, when I was fighting, uh, I always felt free in the cage because I could show behavior that women normally in society are, well can do and they even applauded me for it, you know, be aggressive. And, and, and now when, I, when I'm retired, I feel freed from the cage because every day I was busy with MMA. And even if you didn't have the fight lined up, you were thinking about the fight, you were thinking about improving yourself or having the right diets, still eat... Uh, healthy for the baby no but uh, you know so so uh, I feel liberated I'm happy and I'm, for me this is like I feel a kid in a candy store you know it's uh, like oh no I don't have to make weight I can eat <laughs> it's about all the fun without any of the pressure exactly yeah and it's 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 so different to you know normally when I trained every training you can do a training and you can do a training, but when you do a training, because you know you have to fight or there might be a fight coming up, the same training, you will uh, experience it differently. And now I, well, I, I work out as an older lady now. <laughs> I don't believe that. Yeah, believe it. <laughs> the belly is not allowing me to do a lot. But um, um, after, before I was pregnant, I, I could enjoy training w way more than I ever did. Okay, you know, I want to ask you now, but obviously the women's divisions, being a part of them yourself, there's a lot of talk right now, featherweight, you have Julia Budd, you have Chris Cyborg, and of course everyone wants to say they are the best in the world, and look, there's a lot of reasons why they're not about to fight anytime soon, but for you, what do you think both, both women should be doing to say, you know, I can call myself the best in the world? I think Cyborg is an amazing athlete. She's been uh, undefeated for such a long time. Though she has been busted also a few times, so that takes a little bit away of the, of the shine. But when I looked at her last fight, I think um, you could see how she, even her, uh, it's the same way of fighting. I mean, she, she's a headhunter. She doesn't go to the body and she doesn't mix up. But the accuracy of her punches, I loved it and, and it was good for Holly that she could take it to the fifth round but um, what I see in, in Chris is that she doesn't have to show how good she is because she doesn't need to. She outpowers and strikes everyone uh, <laughs> into, uh, well, yeah, I've experienced that. <laughs> and uh, with, um, well, with our Bellator champ, um, she's amazing and um, I think she will stay a champ for quite a long time. She's very strategic. Uh, she's very strong. <laughs> would, you, would you say Julia is stronger than Chris Cyborg? It's too long ago. When I, when I fought uh, Cyborg the first time in 2009, I felt somebody threw bricks at me. And then the second time, I was a, men, I was a mental and physical mess. I needed all surgeries, blah, blah, blah. And it, to me, it felt she hit less hard than she did in 2009. Yeah, maybe that's a subjective feeling. Maybe you got tougher. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I um, just just put a lot of respect to both of the women, and I hope they both reign for a long, long time. 
You know, I think that a lot of people, I always want to ask someone who's competed with her because with the featherweights, compared to the other divisions, there's not as many women who fight at 145 compared to 115 and 135. And I want to ask you, do you think now that those divisions are getting more attention, Bellator has a champion, UFC now has a champion, do you think now that we're going to see more female athletes try MMA who maybe they didn't think that... and because I always felt like the big advantage Chris Cyborg has, she's technically very good, but she has a very significant strength and power advantage over so many women she competes with that as the division grows, that's changing. Do you think that's what we're going to see in the future? Not just in UFC, but Bellator and across the world. Yeah, no, you know, I was f when I lost my fight against uh, Cyborg, I was forced to fight in 135. There were no other options. So a lot of women have been forced to fight into the 135 division. And also then Ronda Rousey, she, f oh, hey, hey, she came in at 145, dropped to 135. Uh, UFC exploded and then all the attention was on the 135 and what you saw was that UFC only went down because people don't want to see big women fighting I mean we I like it I want to see 150 I think you guys are great no but I don't think we're big at 145 but you, we do not see divisions at 155 and we nothing above it and there are enough women out there that are tall enough and heavy enough to to bring good fights and I really believe that if we want to become a mainstream sport we have to be more democratic and not focus on the looks that much and go for the light cute girls that oh they can also fight no we want to have real true athletes so i believe there will be a lot of more women transferring to you know maybe from boxing or wrestling or whatever to mma and i really hope that we can change the path that you do not have to show too much skin and be too beautiful before you get a chance into the mma scene I guess final question, would you assume, is it safe to say you think it's probably going to be Julia Budd versus Talitha Noguera who recently entered Bellator for the title? Uh, that, would division? Be, that would be an awesome match, yeah. And the last fight with uh, jet lag people, <laughs> four hours of sleep, uh, got a father. Talitha? No, 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 that, that was, she was too heavy. No, 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 uh, Australia. Arlene Blanco, Arlene Blanco. That was a good fight. Arlene, Arlene hits hard. Ar she hit me and I was like, a few more and I go knockout. <laughs> so I would like to see that, like a third fight again. But first, let's first do uh, Talita. She's an amazing athlete and she's strong. So I think, you know, we have the stand up versus the ground and they're both, I think, equally strong. That might be a very interesting matchup. Well, Marlus, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations yeah, once again. You. Please let us know on social media how everything goes. Yeah, yeah. And it was a pleasure speaking to you. Likewise, thank you.